Okay, happy Monday, everybody. Big waves to you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Man, did I miss y'all last week. Um, really, really missed you. So um, I don't like missing a day, much less a week of the Coach's Corner. So, but thank you. Thank you, Andrea, and thanks to everybody that participated and all of you on this. Uh, just a special group. You, you don't realize how special until you're gone for a week and you're like, man, good group to be a part of. So our, our words are going to come from the letter N, as in Nancy, uh, today. So, so we're going to kick it off, Arlene, with one of yours negotiable negotiable so we thought about doing negotiable for monday since you you, you kind of get a fresh start on the week and and maybe it will send us in the right direction for being negotiable um so you look at the definition of negotiable it's open to discussion or modification um and as i was researching the word negotiable it wasn't the easiest word, as easy as you'd think it would be to do. And when I was looking through, I came across uh, John JFK. Um, and I come across uh, John Kennedy and, and some of the things that he said. And in 1961, uh, the Berlin crisis was going on. And from the White House, JFK actually said, we cannot negotiate with people who say what's mine is mine and what's yours is negotiable. Think about that for a minute. What's mine is mine. What's yours is mine. Right? Think about the people. Think, have you ever heard that? What's mine is mine. What's yours is mine. What's yours is negotiable. And I got to thinking about that this morning, and I thought, you know, have I ever been that way? Have, have I ever been the person that's like, I want it my way, what's mine is mine, and we'll negotiate yours, your standards, your beliefs, your visions, your thoughts. I know I've been guilty of that many, many, many times. And the words that I come across when I was thinking about that was like, can you even agree with that? Have you ever been there where you're like, what's mine is mine and what's yours and we'll negotiate, you know? And this whole Berlin crisis was going on in 1961 and it was really creating conflict because that was the mentality. And I thought about the word double standard. Thought about the word egotism. I thought about the word greed. All of those words are words that really create the philosophy of what's yours is your, or what's your, what's, what's mine is mine and what's yours is negotiable. And so another thing that JFK said, he said, conflict is good. It really is good in a negotiate, negotiation process. It's the clash of two ideas, which then all being well forms a what? A third idea. So negotiation is awesome. Being negotiable is awesome when people come together and walk away with a possible third idea. And I thought about relationships. I thought about friends. I thought about coworkers. Um, how many times do we come together? And if our mentality is, What's mine is mine and what's yours is negotiable. Are we going to walk away with probably unresolved issues? But what if we come to the table with, we have different ideas and we're going to come together and walk away with a, with a collective idea of where to go forward, right? So characteristics of a good negotiable human, here they are. And I had to look at myself and go, are you this right now, Brent? You know, number one, open-minded. Charm. Well thought out. 
patience, perseverance, assertiveness. All of these words represent a person that has negotiable skills. And so this, this was really good for me this morning because going in to start the week, I know there's going to be points whether I'm on a partner's council meeting or I'm on this meeting, I'm, I'm coming together with people that all have different ideas. And if we create a negotiable skill set, we walk away with something super powerful rather than closed off, um, immature, egotistical things that get us nowhere. So Andrea, that was my thought this morning. Well, great thoughts, Coach, and so glad to have you back on here. It's good to do this with my buddy, but I do appreciate everybody and like literally everyone helped last week because I was a little paranoid. We had a lot going on. So like everyone under the sun helped us. So, so grateful for all of you. This was a really challenging word. So Arlene, good work. You created some homework and an assignment and hopefully some growth. But when I was looking into this, I found a JFK quote as well which is let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. And I thought, ooh, that's really, really powerful. And then I found a Harvey McKay quote, which was you do not get what you want, you get what you negotiate. And then I started to look into, you know, well, how do we negotiate effectively? Right? What can we do to negotiate effectively? Because I think about there's so many times in my life that especially if there was something important on the line that I could go in either direction, right? Where either I just fold <laughs> right in the beginning, like I'm just gone, I'm out, peace out. Um, or I can get really like uh, rigid in my negotiation where it's going to be my way, right? What's mine? What was it? What's mine is mine and what's yours is negotiable. And obviously neither one is the right path. So how do we negotiate? So, you know, know what you're trying to accomplish. So I started looking at this. So, okay, how do I effectively negotiate? First of all, I've got to know what I really want. So if I'm trying to negotiate, you know, I don't know, better working conditions, what is it that I'm really looking for? What do I really want out of this position or, you know, whatever it may be? Next is come up with a game plan before the negotiation start. So if I'm, you know, working with my kids and I think we need to negotiate screen time because I'm one of those moms, even though like one's practically an adult, we still have rules around screen time. And if I know what I want to negotiate with them, if I have a game plan walking into it, well, it's probably going to go hopefully a little bit better because I've got it mapped out in my mind. Um, figure out what they want. So take the time to study the person that you're negotiating with and what they truly want. You know, maybe my work doesn't want to provide me snacks in the break room because it's an expense, but they want me happy and more productive. So figure out what it is that everybody wants out of the end result so we can negotiate better. And this one I love, and it made me think of the seven habits of highly effective people. It says always work towards a win-win. And, you know, in that book, it talks about how, you know, so many times we can go into maybe an agreement where there's some places that we're winning and some places where we're losing. And we just try to hope that it kind of balances our, itself out. But what they said in the book is that, no, you've got to look for the win-win for everybody. Arlene's got to win. Hill's got to win. Leanne's got to win. Andrea's got to win. Like we all have to win if we're going to truly have an appropriate negotiation. And then react strongly. It said that we need to react strongly if we're trying to negotiate with somebody that's untrustworthy. And I think all people are good and you know, you guys know that about me, but there are probably situations where all of us can't be trusted in you know certain things like me around a donut. Like there's certain situations where we're just not trustworthy. So just know that when we're negotiating with somebody and we're really working in a place that maybe it's a weakness for them, well, know that when we're walking into the negotiation. So that was kind of the how-to. 
right? And I'm, you know, I love my lists and how to, how to, how to, but all that made me think about was when we shouldn't negotiate. Like, I know I probably think a little different than most people, but when I was looking at that, I'm like, oh, oh, but I know there's places. So that's where I kind of looked at just really briefly was where should we not negotiate? Like, what are things that we just, sorry, it is what it is. This is, I feel very strongly about it. And the first is our values. So if I truly value loyalty, if I truly value integrity or faith or whatever, whatever my values are, I cannot negotiate there. Like that's got to be a hard pass that if I'm kind of going into an agreement with somebody and it feels disloyal to me, well, then I have to say, ooh, I'm going to have to pass on this. It could be great for me, but it makes me feel disloyal. And that's a strong value of mine. I'm going to have to pass. Next is your boundaries. We can't negotiate on our boundaries. And it could be around, you know, so many different things. We all have different things where we feel comfortable either interacting with other people or even, and maybe even more importantly, our boundaries with ourselves. So if I tell myself that I only get one donut in a week, <laughs> I'm very donut focused today. If I only get one, and that's a boundary that I've set for myself, I can't negotiate and say, well, you know, it's been a tough week or they're having a sale or whatever, all the ways that we can kind of try to wiggle out of things. If I've made an agreement or set a boundary for myself, <laughs> cute depo, that I've got to stick with it. And then lastly, I'm going to say we should not negotiate our vision for the future. And that doesn't mean that there can't be, you know, so maybe you want to retire in Italy and your spouse says, no, 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 I want to ret retire in Puerto Rico. Well, maybe you figure out what's the real importance in that vision, right? So maybe it's, uh, I don't know anything about either of these places. So exotic, we'll say, or they speak a different primary language. I don't know. You find out what are the things that are really attracting you to that vision, the tax breaks, and then find a way to make all the things that are really important in that vision work for both of you. So that's where I went. Sorry for the donut talk. Coach, I'm very grateful to have you back. And this was a good one, Arlene. It, it's really good to be back. Now I'm focused on donuts. So I appreciate <laughs> that. I was really trying to do good coming off my trip. You got me, you tripped me right out of the gate. So thanks. You got to have that person, right? That tripped you so you can see the strength. Um, so anyway, I'm going to try not to have a donut today, but, uh, Hope you guys had a great Monday or have a good Monday. And uh, thanks for the word, Arlene. This was a good one today. We'll see you back tomorrow. Love you guys. God bless you. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you.